Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to those of you who are joining us from your home worship spaces as well. Welcome to you. Welcome to those of you who are joining us uh, tomorrow, the next day, next week, next month. We welcome you to worship with us as well. Uh, I invite you, if you are worshiping at home and you, it is your custom to light the Christ candle with us, to find your candle, find your lighter, and uh, join me as we uh, open our worship with prayer. Jesus Christ, light of the world, shine on us, we pray. Shine through us, we pray. Shine within us, we pray. Shine around us, we pray. May your light be so present that it blots out the darkness, that it brings life and grace and hope into every corner of your world, we pray. Amen. join me in the call to worship. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world knows who they God has founded it on the seas. And established it on the rivers. Let us join our hearts in praise. Of the Father of all. Let us worship God together. And together and sing hymn number 301, Let Us Build a House.
It is our family tradition to share the joys and the concerns that we bring on our hearts with one another, asking for each other to lift us up in prayer. Uh, if you have a joy or a concern to share and you would rather write it instead of speak it, you are welcome to take the card that's in, take one of the cards that's in the pew rack in front of you and write it and place it in the offering plate and uh, we will lift it for you in prayer. Um, so at this time, Henry's going to walk around with the microphone. Also, if you are joining us uh, from your home worship spaces and you have a joy or a concern to share, please uh, chat it into uh, the chat box and it will be shared uh, for the community in prayer. So if you have something you'd like to speak aloud, go ahead and raise your hand and Henry will find you and speak right into the microphone. Please. Hi, I'm Pam Adair, and I have a joy that it is the season of planting and growing. And last year, my string beans overproduced, and I have <laughs> a jar of beans. I've already planted my garden, and these are um, climbers. They're not bush beans, but if anybody would like any, I brought some little bags, and I'm happy to share today. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. We'll keep it in the family right now. Um, I'm Scott Adair. Uh, keep some thoughts for uh, Doug Bird. He's at home today, struggling just a little bit. He uh, was working here at church and um, fell down, and his legs are a mess. Nothing's broken, but uh, he's going to be tied up for uh, at home for a few days. Uh, but keep him in your prayers. Thank you. Oh, God, we lift to you the joy of planting and putting our hands in the dirt and the abundance that you produce from that, uh, that work in the garden and sharing, the opportunity to share. And we do lift up our brother, Doug Bird, as he is healing from a fall, and we pray for your grace to be upon him. Hi, I'm Meg Miller. Um, so I have a concern, my friend Tom, our friend Tom uh, was passed away this week and um, he was very much a blessing. Um, I also have a joy as a deacon. I am announcing uh, Pentecost is coming up and we have a Pentecost offering going on. Um, last year we raised over $600 for our Pentecost offering. We're hoping to do more. 40% of the proceeds from our um, collection go to the kids right here and 60% go to the greater UP um, Presbytery USA and um, we have cards in here you can put it or we'll also have a box in the um, gathering space for that but it's a real joy and it helps children who are at risk it helps kids develop more mission work and volunteerism it's just a really really cool offering um, and I wanted to share that are we doing geraniums, Pam? So we're also collecting red geraniums, and you can bring them at any time after. That weekend, so Pentecost, sorry, Pentecost is the first Sunday of June. It's like June 5th. So don't bring them before like the third, if you want to bring them to the back door, because otherwise we just have to water them and take care of them. Okay, so wait a couple weeks, but in a couple weeks, red geraniums. Thank you. Before Anne, just for a moment, I just want to fill in a little detail in, um, in what you just shared, uh, Meg, and that is she was speaking of Tom Gladfelty, who joined our church in the second to last new member class. He's a pilot, was a pilot for Spirit Airlines. Um, we have been praying for him and his family. He had uh, gone down in a uh, private plane. He was the only uh, person on board, and um, just in the last few days, uh, he has um, entered the church triumphant, and I understand that they will be celebrating his life in Maryland, um, but I also am, am hoping to get his mother's address so that we can let her know that, um, that our faith family joins in the celebration. That's where his mother lives, but we, I think we want to also say that we join uh, our hearts with theirs in this such a hard and, um, and uh, difficult time of grief. So we lift up the family of Tom Glatfelty, and we lift up all of his friends, and we lift up um, his colleagues as pilots in this time of loss. Ann Walker, I have two joys and one prayer concern. Uh, the first joy is we had the second annual United Way golf outing on Friday at Raisin Valley Golf Course, and we had 
decent weather. The wind got a little funny at the end, but um, I want to extend a great full uh, a heart of gratitude for the volunteers that helped from our church and to Reverend Kathy King, who stepped in to fill a spot on the Kiwanis team and came away with the uh, um, longest drive. Is that correct, Kathy? Longest I, drive for women. For women, nudging out, <laughs> nudging out my daughter who got closest to the pin. So yeah. just to tell you, it was a great thing and would wonderful if we could get a whole Presbyterian team together next year to make it even more fun. Uh, second thing, United Way is coming back with their health fair again. This, this time it's going to be Thursday, June 9th at St. Mary's Fellowship Hall. I'll be looking for volunteers, but I'm, I'm going to make sure that Craig has the flyer to send out. It's a great time to get blood work done um, for people who need some help with that, and there are vouchers available who need some relief financially. So look for that information. If you want to volunteer, let me know. Lastly, a prayer from Will. Yum Fowl, who can't be here today because he's in, enjoying the uh, christening of his great niece, um, but a beloved friend, uh, Peggy Sneed, who uh, many people know uh, throughout the community through theater and music and stuff, apparently suffered a, a major stroke and is in um, a coma in Toledo Hospital and has yet to reach the point where they can do a full assessment of what's going on with her. So lots of prayers for Peggy Sneed. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. We lift to you, oh God, uh, your child, Peggy, and her family, and those who tend after her at this time. May your grace be in all and through all, we pray. Hello, uh, <clears throat> I'm Jeff Lee. Uh, I have a good friend, Ola, that's in Lviv, and moved out of there over in Ukraine, and then went to Kiev. I'm learning all these names now. Uh, and she's documented it on a page in Facebook, which is how I met her was through my pug. Pugs get around the world, you know, and she has a pug named George. And they're sort of having a little fun with that in the midst of all the sadness. But amazing to read what she goes through every day and her feelings and emotions. Um, it's real. Obviously, we know that. But it's a little different in World War II. In World War II, we didn't have the uh, uh, knowledge of what was going on like we do now. Uh, and it makes it real, which think about World War II now, what they all went through. So prayers for uh, people that have been hurt by wars forever. Think about that, medieval, everything. Just sort of broaden your view. It makes it uh, real. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. And gracious God, we thank you that you have made a way to put a face on this for us through Jeff's relationship with Olaf. And we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the people of Russia. We pray for the people of all, all nations who are in war and in war-torn lands. We pray for a deep and abiding peace, we pray. Good morning. My name is Brian, and I have a great joy of a few things. This is my fourth year anniversary here at Presbyterian Becomsey in my home. And in Bible class this week, I read uh, the essay that we were told to read, and it made me feel quite well that the PC USA is embracing diversity, which makes me as a gay individual feel very proud to be here because I've always wondered if we really did belong somewhere. So that is my grace for that. And then I'm also joyful for my oxygen machine that was given to me from a great person. And um, sorry for the beeping and the rattling, but it does keep me alive. So um, give and take a little bit. Um, I think I mastered the beeping. So hopefully you won't hear any more beeping, but you'll still hear a little vibration. So at least I'm still breathing and thankful for that. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Brian. And um, I said to Brian before worship that if everybody understands that when we hear the beeping, it is actually keeping you alive, that that will transform our spirits to be generous. <laughs> so I'm grateful for you, Brian. Thank you. My neighbor uh, has a boyfriend, uh, 
his name is Bob, and uh, she was telling me uh, this week that Bob is undergoing radiation treatment for prostate cancer. And in the story that she told, she tells me that he is surprised by this, shocked and angry, and he's not being the best patient that he could. Um, and so I'm going to uh, write him a card with a note on it today. But uh, keep uh, Bob Michelak in mind. Um, Bob's given a lot to our society in our country. Uh, he was a helicopter pilot for the Detroit Police Department. Um, he was flying fixed wing for them uh, when he crashed his airplane because a mechanic left a wrench inside the motor when he was working on it too. So he's had some interesting experiences in his life and uh, I, I hope this one can go as smoothly as possible for him. Thank you. God, we lift up to you prayers for one another in this faith family and also prayers for our neighbors. And so we pray that you would incline your heart uh, unto Dennis and, and uh, be grace filled upon uh, Bob uh, as he goes through his surgery and his healing and his family as well. Lord, we lift up Bob to you. Hi, I'm Kate Winter. <clears throat> and I have sort of mixed joy and concern about my sister, Nancy. Her birthday is on Monday, so I invited her over and we, we had a really nice lunch, Joel and she and I, um, to celebrate. And uh, she's got a friend who's taking her out tomorrow. And the grandsons that of her uh, late husband are reacting positively to her and she's had a, a sort of a shaky relationship with them. So they are becoming her family again which is wonderful. My main concern is that she has lupus and she's had it for years, but she is, I think going down, she's having more and more trouble walking. And um, I watched her as she just struggled to get in and out of the car and, and she drives, she drove to my house, but it just prayers for her for, <laughs> I don't know if, if it's healing or just being able to deal with what is facing her right now. But at least she has family around her, which is really, really good for her. She needs that. She's been feeling a lot of isolation as most of us, a lot of us have because of COVID, but she's getting out now. But prayers for her healing and well-being. Did you say Nancy? Yeah. Okay. God, we lift up prayers for Nancy. As we lift up prayers for our neighbors, we lift up prayers for our friends as well. Uh, may your grace be with her and through her uh, transition to whatever the new normal may be. Anybody on the Zoom community with joys and concerns to share? All right, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I invite the children and teachers and uh, youth to join me up on the steps this morning. Um, and Tim, if you could project this image so that everybody, and you can't probably see it real well. It probably looks like a big collage because it is a big collage, but I wanted you to kind of have a, a reference. I'm, I started calling this time together. This is a time for those who are young at heart because it really is beyond you guys. It's all of us. So let's just kind of take a seat with this picture and keep that up there so that you'll see what we're looking at. Jana, you can come on down and join us too. All right, this is a, um, this is something that I made in seminary. This is actually a collage. Um, and I want you guys to look at it, take a moment to look at it, spend a little bit of time here. It's got a little glare, but spend a little bit of time. And you all, if you can see what you can see up there. And here's my question. Where do you see the image of God? And before you answer, I want you to say it kind of like this. I see the image of God here because blank. Yeah, nobody has names on here, right? But they all have names. I just don't know any of their names. I, I, what do you think her name is? What would you name her? I don't know. I don't know. And you see the image of God? Why? So true, Henry. I see the image of God in my dog, Aiden, all the time. Where else do you see the image of God?
And why do you see image? Okay, so she's pointing down at the bottom and up here, Charlotte, why do you see the image of God and there and there? Why do you see the image of God there? Because plants also give us food and crops and they help our gardens look really nice and even trees give us ale. Oh, that's beautiful. So you see the image of God in the, in the fact that they provide us with food and life and beauty. Beautiful. Where else do you see the image of God in this picture? Um, I think so. Yeah, I am. Why? Because uh, we need fish so that, so that, so that, so that we can catch fish because they are healthy and we need that plants and that's beautiful. So I just want to make an observation with all of you young at heart behind you guys. Not one of these beautiful children up here have pointed to a single human being in this collage. They have only pointed to animals and plants and flowers and fish showing the image of God, which is just kind of warming my heart right now, you guys, because really, and we'll read this in a little bit, when God created the world, blessed and called all the world good and placed God's divine fingerprint on each part of this world. So you see the divine image in all. I love that. Anybody else want to say anything? How about out here? If you see anything up here, did you want to point anything out? Anybody out? Anything out that shows the image of God to you? And why? Hold up your hand, he says. If you have one, hold up your hand. Anybody? What do you think? What do you think, Carol? No, what I see is the heart shape because God is love. Oh, so you see the image of God in the whole heart. I love that because God is love. Well, I'm going to leave this just when I, when I come out, I'm going to put this out in the gathering space. I want to invite all of us to take a look at this collage and see where you see the image of God and why you say, I see the image of God right here. And when you guys go, you're going to talk more about it too. Charlotte, did you have something else you wanted to say before uh, you go? Yes. Yes, what? The reason I didn't put out any of, these, of the people is because we are the children of God. And so we are already a part of God. Ah, we are. Indeed, we are a part of this heart. We are a part of this heart of God. But there are people who are sad. There are people who are happy. There are people who are angry. There are people who are, who are, um, who are uh, together. There are people who look like us, people who don't look like us. This is this whole heart of God. That's why I love it. So I'm going to share it with everybody. And you take some time to see what you see in it, okay? Okay, let's, let's uh, say a word of prayer together. Let's pray. God, we rejoice with you in the beauty of your creation. We rejoice with you in the way in which your image shines forth through all that you have touched, all that you have breathed life into. Be with these young people as they go to learn and to share with each other. Amen. And I think before you go, there was some one other thing you guys were going to do, I think, right? Okay. Okay. All right. Behind me on the table. Okay. All right. There's a little secret right now, real quick. I'll help. Oh, you've got it. I said, you've got it. He said, yep, yep. This is Joy McClellan's last Sunday with us as she's been filling in for Francisco while he's been traveling with Ty Day. Can we do what we do when we say goodbye to somebody who's been with us for a little while? Can we offer her a blessing? If you would raise, everybody raise a hand and I'll give you, a, and that prayer shawl is yours to wrap around you and know how much you're loved and, and, and we're so grateful. God, we, uh, we send a blessing upon Joy as she goes forth from this place that she will uh, take with her the blessings of this place and that she will shine your light into every place that you guide her and lead her to go, we pray. In your name, the name that is above all names, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Joy.
Please stand if you're able and join in the prayer of confession. It's a unison prayer. God, our deliverer, we confess that we are too reluctant to speak and to live according to your truth. We feel comfortable with the way things are, passively condoning injustice. We see ourselves as insiders, excluding those we consider outsiders. We find it easier to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and overthrow, than to build and to plant. Forgive us, O oh God, for being timid disciples. Empty us of fear and shame, and fill us with love that is humble and patient and kind. We pray this in the name of the one who humbled himself, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And then join in the affirmation of faith. <clears throat> God built the heavens, the earth, and everything in them. God calls us to be builders as well. God heals us to build our lives, to restore broken places and continue to grow. God strengthens us to build our faith, to study the word and ponder its interpretation. God works through us to build our community, to build bridges of understanding and systems of justice. God transforms us to build history by fulfilling the promises of scripture, to preach the good news of God's love and liberation for all. Thank you. I invite you to be seated. As we come into a time of scripture, Larry and I are going to be sharing the scripture reading this morning. It's from the very first chapter of the book of Genesis. We are reading the whole chapter back and forth together. Uh, I'm going to be reading from a different translation than what you have in the pew. This is the Common English Bible, and Larry introduced me to the Common English Bible translation. We sometimes uh, turn to it in our Tuesday first look, and so I invite you to listen to these words, these ancient, ancient words with us. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light. And so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate the waters from each other. And God made the dome and separated the waters under the dome from the waters above the dome. And it happened in that way. God named the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. God said, let the waters under the sky come together into one place so that the dry land can appear, and that's what happened. God named the dry land earth, and he named the gathered waters seas. God saw how good it was. God said, let the earth grow plant life, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind throughout the earth. And that's what happened. The earth produced plant life, plants yielding seeds, each according to its kind and trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind. And God saw how good it was. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will mark events, sacred seasons, days and years. 
And there will be lights in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth. And that's what happened. God made the stars and two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day and the smaller light to rule over the night. And God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw how good it was. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. God said, let the waters swarm with living things and let birds fly above the earth up in the dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals and all the tiny living things that swarm in the waters, each according to its kind. And all the winged birds, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. And then God blessed them. Be fertile and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, and wildlife. And that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. And God saw how good it was. And then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. And God, God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them, male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky and everything crawling on the ground. And then God said, I now give to you all the plants of the earth that yield seed and all the trees whose fruit produces its seed within it. These will be your food. To all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green grasses for food. And that's what happened. God saw everything he had made, and it was supremely good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Since September, we've been exploring different Christian practices. They've been in kind of four-week, generally four-week units. We talk about them in our worship time together, turn to scriptures that introduce them and uh, in the lives of our ancient ancestors of the faith. And, and then we uh, have invitations to practice these practices. And today we begin a new one, honor God's diversity. And we know what diversity is, or do we? It's become such a freighted word. The Oxford Dictionary defines diversity as a range of many people or things that are very different from each other. Biodiversity, for example, describes the variety of life in the world or in any given ecosystem. Larry and I just read this beautiful story from the very first chapter of the Bible that paints a picture of abundant biodiversity, all manner of fruit and seed-bearing plants and trees, all the tiny living things that swarm in the waters, every kind of creature that crawls upon the ground, every species of every living thing supremely good. Diversity is a singular noun that describes a composition of plurality. So here's an example. In just a month or two, our church nominating committee will come together and they're tasked with slating a list of candidates to serve as leaders who will reflect a diversity of age, perspective, tenure within the congregation, 
spirituality style, gender, personality, etc. This leadership team is ideally designed to represent the whole of the congregation demographically. So that when you as individual congregation members look at that picture on the, on the wall of the leadership team, you ideally will see yourself represented in that team that makes decisions here. When we get together as a leadership team, we seek to honor that diversity around the table, knowing that every person there brings something unique and different and valuable. Some of our eldest elders serve alongside people the ages of their children. And women and men sit next to each other with full voice. People who have joined the church just in the last couple of years serve alongside people who grew up in this church. Thinkers and feelers and activists and contemplatives, we're all colleagues together. We honor each other. In their diversity, they are unified in purpose because together they seek the will of God for this church. So another example. When you drove in and you parked today, you saw that the rain garden is continuing to take shape. Maybe, if not, see it on your way out. It is being planted with diversity. Lee Walsh showed me yesterday the diagram that she has laid out that shows all the plants, the colors of their blooms, and when they are each scheduled to bloom. They're different heights, different colors. They attract different kinds of insects. We are honoring diversity in that design. Many plants in one garden unified in purpose to improve the health and the vitality and the productivity of that space. But what is God's diversity? Is God inherently diverse? One presence and yet composed of difference? Unified in purpose and yet multidimensional, expressed, experienced in a variety of ways. You know, since about 300 years after the death of Christ, Christians have referred to God as Trinity, one God, three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, three persons, one unified heart. It's a confusing doctrine. We worship one God, we don't worship three gods. So no matter how we describe this to our Mormon colleagues, our Muslim colleagues, our Jewish colleagues, to them, it feels polytheistic. Our Hindu colleagues think it makes perfect sense because they are polytheists until we insist we are monotheistic. Our Buddhist colleagues think it's just another way to describe the oneness of all things. And then we say, yes, and God is transcendent above and beyond all things, even while being in all things. In the end, it's a mystery and we take it on faith. And yet, honor God's diversity. What if in this practice, instead of dismissing the Trinity and saying, well, that's a mystery, a mystery doc doctrine, which it is, we intentionally explore the mystery, the diverse nature and character of God. In 2010, the Presbyterian Church introduced a document for study throughout the churches. It was called the Trinity, God's Love Overflowing, to help us get a better sense of the fullness of this doctrine we profess. It was a project born partly out of a frustration with the limitations of language and recognizing that we have a faith that is steeped in the sins of patriarchy. How can children of abusive men find their way to the heart of a loving God only referred to as father? How can women and girls find themselves in a story that only talks about mankind 
and refers to masculine images of God and references God exclusively as he and him, often with a capital H. Then how can the family of faith enter into a deep and meaningful relationship with the Holy Spirit who is referred to as it? So the Trinity document offered a range of options to explore in prayer and personal devotion, a wide diversity of metaphors and images of God from the Psalms, from the prophets. God is neither male nor female, but both and all. God does not have a body and transcends all categories of human body. John Calvin reminds us, no figures of speech can describe God's extraordinary affection towards us, for it is infinite and various. We honor God's diversity by expanding the language we use to talk to and talk about God and God's children. Ron Reinster is the author of a book called Worship Words, Discipling Language for Faithful Ministry. And in this book, he shares a story about his conversion to inclusive language. He was a student at Princeton Theological Seminary in the 1990s, and he listened to the arguments his fellow students made, and he dismissed them. He didn't understand what the fuss was about for, for gender inclusive language. He didn't didn't understand it. He said, of course, mankind included women. Of course, saying Christ came to save all men didn't only mean males. And then he attended a chapel service led by courageous and creative leaders who introduced the service by saying this, throughout this entire service, all references to people will be feminine. This is only an experiment, of course. We invite you to please hear the words like women and her with an implied asterisk intended to include everyone. And he rolled his eyes. Determined to fully participate in worship, he found he couldn't. Every reference to woman and her was like a slap in the face, he said, that said, you're not welcome here. Because when he heard the psalm, blessed is the woman who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. And he heard prayers lifted for women preparing for ministry. He did not feel included. He did not feel prayed for. He vowed to incorporate inclusive language whenever he led worship in the future. Because words matter. Images matter. Honoring God's diversity through more expansive language is hospitable. It's generous. It's invitational. And it may well heal broken hearts, may indeed welcome someone home to the embrace of God. Listen with me to one of the verses that we read this morning. It's actually Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. This is offered in a few different translations. Listen. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. God created humankind in her image. In the image of God, she created them. God created humanity in God's image, in God's own image, in the divine image, God created them. Do you hear the difference? Let's be attentive to language and the way it includes and the way it excludes the way it honors and the way it dishonors. Honoring God's diversity is about honoring the inherent diversity of God and about honoring God's diverse design for the world. In his 180 page document, the 18 year old Buffalo shooter includes all kinds of disturbing, dishonoring language about other human beings made in the divine image of God. It is 
anti-Jewish, anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, anti-Black, anti-other. An analysis done by the International Center for Counterterrorism concluded, the Buffalo Shooters Manifesto reflects a young white person who believes that their future has been compromised due to the mere presence of others. Simply by the existence of diversity in the world, he and his kind feel threatened, threatened enough to take up arms. He's 18. Why is diversity said to be our greatest strength, he wrote. Said throughout the media, spoken by politicians, educators, and celebrities, but no one ever seems to give a reason why. What gives a nation strength, he wrote, and how does diversity increase that strength? What does give a nation strength? That's one of the big debates today. Is it a muscular domination of others? Or is it dominion according to the heart of God? God said, let us make humanity in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That we are in a position to exercise power over the whole created world is true. This world and the fullness of her beauty and diversity and blessing that we are in a position to exercise power over the whole created world is true and we do. And the question is how do we and how will we and what is strength in exercising power and what is grace? Domination is the pursuit of self-interest. Dominion embodies the likeness and character of God as a faithful steward of power with love and generosity and compassion and justice and mercy, caring for all, providing for all, blessing all, supremely good, God called all. So I was planting my vegetable garden this week, as many of you have been. I can see it in your faces and in the little stooped way you're walking. <laughs> so as I pulled living plants out by their roots in order to make way for the things I wanted to plant, I was reminded again that we hold the power over life and death in our hands every day. We choose when our seedlings first emerge from the earth, how we're gonna thin them, which ones survive and which ones don't. Honeysuckle and wild roses and thistle and phragmite and poison ivy, you know, we put on our armor and we yank and pull and we poison and kill. Carpenter bees out at our farm are drilling holes into our house made of wood. And so we hang mason jars to trap them until they suffocate. Woodchucks burrow under our ground until they get into our garden and they eat the things we planted for ourselves until we set a trap and kill them. Honoring God's diversity is confessional. It recognizes humility in the choices we make and it acknowledges the ever greater need to learn more and understand more about the world around us and the life therein and that our choices may become ever more responsible and bear even greater life. So may we be mindful in this practice over the next few weeks and beyond. May we be attentive to the image of God in others, in all others. May we be thoughtful with our words, choosing, choosing wherever possible to be hospitable and to be inviting. 
may we go outside into the garden or into a park or into our backyard under a tree and read Genesis chapter one slowly and thoughtfully and humbly reflecting on the power that rests in our hands and how to faithfully exercise it with love. I did read recently that someone observed that how we treat our animals, how we treat our gardens, how we treat the world around us probably also relates to how we treat fellow people. And in all things, may God creator, deliverer, comforter, midwife, healer, encourager, parent, preacher, prophet, lover, beloved, love. Be honored. This time as we move into a time of offering, this is an opportunity to exercise the practice of generosity, to give so that others may more fully live, to honor the diversity of beauty in our world and all of God's children. As Meg said earlier, the Pentecost offering is going on. If you would like to give to the Pentecost offering, 40% of which stays for the children and youth of this church, 60% goes to at-risk children around the world and educational programs and health programs specifically designed for children. There are envelopes in the pew in front of you and we will dedicate that offering at Pentecost on the 4th of June. 4th of June, first weekend of June, first Sunday of June. And the choir has an offering of music.
Gracious and loving God, we give to you these gifts made from our hands, the spirit working through them as they were knit into prayer shawls filled with grace for those who will receive them. We pray as they wrap these shawls around them, may they know your presence and your love. May they sense your healing in every fiber. We also offer these financial gifts to you, the fruit of the labor of our lives and our work. Multiply them, we pray. Guide us, direct us to the way they are most needed, we pray. In and through your name, we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in the charge and the blessing, and then I will sit, we'll listen as Joy offers us uh, a postlude, and then I'll extinguish the candle, we'll head out into the world. Compassion, creativity, and joy are ours through Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit move us to preserve and enhance life on earth, giving clear witness to the life-giving purpose of our creator and all God's people say together. Amen. 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 Amen.